welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. PC gaming in 2024, it's cheap and you can build the best budget gaming PC for between $500 and $900. We'll show you how to stop wasting your money, avoid common mistakes, and get the max FPS with the best budget gaming PC builds right now. And we'll give you specific budget gaming PC build lists at $550, $650 and $750 to get you started, along with great gaming monitor deals to complete your setup. Remember, if you get value out of this video, please give a like so it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 or 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And Windows 10 can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. The most important thing to remember when building the best budget gaming PC is that we wanna get the biggest, fastest graphics card we can afford and then just get a CPU that isn't gonna bottleneck it. That's because most of our FPS comes from the GPU, not the CPU, and no, Future-proofing is not a thing at this budget level, but smart upgrade paths are, and we'll cover that as we go. We would also love to get more than eight gigabytes of VRAM if possible, especially if we wanna play the latest AAA titles on release at 1440p or even 1080p at the highest settings. Let's start off at the ultra budget level where we can build the best budget gaming PC in 2024 for between 500 and 550 dollars US with all new parts. And everything is linked down in the video description, so check those out. Let's start off where else? The GPU, where we have a couple of options to hit our price point. The first one is the Intel Arc A580, which can be had right now in the US for just $159. And it comes with an acceptable eight gigabytes of VRAM. Then we have the Radeon RX 6600 coming in around $189 along with eight gigabytes of VRAM. You can also consider the slightly faster Arc A750 eight gigabyte GPU, which at times sells for right around the same price as the RX 6600. I'd call these GPUs very solid 1080p GPUs, but not quite 1440p ones. And looking at recent benchmarks by TechSpot for the RX 7600 XT review, you can expect at least 70 FPS across a wide range of hard to run games and a lot more FPS in easier to run titles like Valorant, Overwatch 2, and Fortnite. For those wondering how the Intel GPUs are doing with their drivers, I'll say that Intel has come a long way and the drivers work in virtually every current game, but you may have to wait a little bit for a newly released title to get an Intel GPU driver update. If you're willing to put up with that, it might be worth the cost savings. For the CPU, we just want the cheapest platform that won't bottleneck our GPU. Right now for about $95, Intel's i3-1200F or the AMD Ryzen 5500 are both excellent options paired with inexpensive motherboard. The i3-1200F is four cores and eight threads, while the Ryzen 5500 is six cores and 12 threads. Both perform similarly in gaming. For the i3-1200F, we can use any B660 or B760 motherboard that uses DDR4 RAM. Avoid the DDR5 ones. Great boards like the ASRock B660M Pro RS or Gigabyte B760M DS3H can be had for right around $100 and can be used in the future to upgrade to a CPU like the i5-13600K. For the Ryzen 5500, you can use any decent B550 motherboard or even a B450 motherboard if you really need to save every dollar, since the CPU only has PCIe Gen 3 speed. Boards like the ASRock B450M Pro 4 AC are just $80, and they have two M.2 NVMe slots along with Wi-Fi. B550 motherboards can be had sometimes for just $10 or even $20 more, like the Gigabyte B550M DS3H AC or ASRock B550M Pro 4, and would allow you to use PCIe Gen 4 with a future CPU upgrade, like the Ryzen 5700X 3D or the 5800X 3D. Both the Ryzen 5500 and the Intel i3-1200F come with very capable included coolers, which we'll want to use to maximize our GPU investment. For the RAM, we just wanna get the minimum, which for these CPUs is a two by eight gigabyte kit, so 16 gigabytes total of DDR4 3200CL16 for right around $35, like this silicon power kit. We only need 16 gigabytes for gaming, and since the motherboards that we're looking at all have four RAM slots, we can always upgrade the RAM in the future by dropping in an identical kit, 
Remember, don't mix and match different RAM kits, and that would give us 32 gigabytes if needed. For the SSD, any budget M.2 NVMe drive will do just fine for gaming, and I recommend getting at least 500 gigabytes of storage. You can grab a drive like the Patriot P300, the Team Group MP33, or Silicon Power A60 500 gigabyte drives for right around $40. Note this is one area that if you do have a little bit of extra money, you can go up to one terabyte for only about $20 more, so that might make sense for you. For the rest of the build, we just want a basic PC case with at least two intake fans and one exhaust. I really like this Deepcool CC360 ARGB Micro ATX case that comes in either all white or black with a PSU shroud, 320 millimeter ARGB fans, and looks pretty slick for only $59. Another great pick is a BitPhoenix Nova Mesh Micro ATX case that we've done previous builds in and has the same specs as the Deepcool case for right around $57. For the power supply, we just want to get a C tier rated unit from the PSU Coltus list, and the MSI A550BN is perfect at 550 watts for just $49 right now. Altogether, this build comes out to $515 with the Ryzen 5500 and cheaper B450 motherboard along with the ARC A580, or closer to $560 for the i3-1200F and the Radeon RX 6600. Let's throw in a couple great cheap 1080p gaming monitors out there, and the Cori 24E3 is my number one pick because it's so great price performance. It's flat, it's IPS, 1080p, 24 inch, 165 hertz refresh rate, and it's got great motion handling for the monitor. Now, Cori makes panels for others as well, but they also market their own here. $115, super cheap. Part of why this is so super cheap, that stand, it's just a piece of plastic, doesn't tilt, doesn't swivel, doesn't height adjust, anything like that. You can, of course, get a monitor arm for like $25 out there. That would be my recommendation. But for $150, this thing is hard to beat. Another cheap alternative out there, if you can't find that model, is the Acer Nitro KG2. 241Y, and this is flat, but it's VA. It has a little bit of that kind of VA smearing you get, but if you're looking for something super cheap and you can't find the Cori monitor out there, this would be my number one alternative. If you have a little bit more to spend, but you don't want to jump up to 1440p because you don't, you want the pixel count to stay where it is, I would check out the BenQ EX240. This is my number one 1080p pick out there right now, 165 hertz. Basically, it's a better version of the Cori monitor, and it's got height, tilt, swivel, all that kind of stuff. And the speakers aren't bad on this monitor either, which is something you often don't say about gaming monitors, but $159, it's definitely a little pricier. For those looking to get into 1440p, 60 FPS gaming as cheap as possible, my recommendation is to upgrade the GPU from the previous build to an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte GPU. Please do not buy the terrible eight gigabyte version, or you can grab the Intel Arc A770 16 gigabyte GPU. You can pick up the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte for right around $290 US, or the Arc A770 16 gigabyte GPU for $280. The Arc GPU will give you the biggest FPS boost to the two, averaging 63 FPS in the TechSpot benchmark, while the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte comes in at 58 average FPS. In terms of driver support, while the Intel GPU is leagues better than it was, you still might be waiting for a driver for a brand new game. Either of these GPU upgrades makes this the best $650 gaming PC in 2024. For those looking for higher FPS 1440p gaming, let's jump into the best $750 gaming PC build. Let's start off with the GPU. Here we definitely want a GPU that has at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM and is fast as well as reliable. Now coming up from the previous GPUs, we have the RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte and the RX 6750 XT 12 gigabyte GPUs, which you can still find in many markets for right around $320 to $340. For those unable to find one of these GPUs, the alternate is the RX 7600 XD 16 gigabyte GPU for about $330, which has more VRAM, but is about 15% slower, though still quite a bit faster than the RTX 3060. The RX 7600 XT also only uses half of its PCIe connector at Gen 4 speed, which is fine when paired with a PCIe Gen 4 CPU and motherboard, but on a slower PCIe Gen 3 system, like the Ryzen 5500, will cost us about 8% FPS. It's not a huge loss, but it's just something to be aware of. The RX 7600 XT is good for about 67 average FPS in the TechSpot benchmark. And again, these are mostly hard run single player titles at ultra settings. So dropping the settings to high, something I recommend anyways, or playing easier to run games like Valorant, Overwatch 2, or CS2, 
will result in a lot more FPS. Meanwhile, the RX 6700 XT 12GB GPU is good for 76 average FPS in these benchmarks. And remember, the 6750 XT, if you can find it, is even 6% faster than that. For the rest of the build, we'd really like to spend a small amount and jump up in CPU performance. I like the Ryzen 5600 or 5600X along with Intel's i5-12400F for right around $130 US. When choosing between the Ryzen 5600 or 5600X, just get the cheaper one. And if they're about the same price as they are right now at the time of filming, then grab the 5600X for a tiny little performance bump. On the Intel side, you could also look at the i5-12600KF, which right now sells for about $150 in the US, but it doesn't give that much more gaming performance and it requires more money to be spent on cooling and the PSU, so I'd opt to go with the i5-12400F if you want Intel. These CPUs will pick up about 15% gaming performance using the faster GPUs when compared to the ultra-budget gaming CPUs that we were looking at in the previous build. Both of these are also PCIe Gen 4, so no issues pairing with the RX 7600 XT. Now, both the Ryzen 5600 and i5-12400F come with included stock coolers that are absolutely fine, so we can save some money there and upgrade to a $20 to $30 budget tower air cooler later, or if we have the budget, we can do it now. In this build, we went with the id cooling SE214 XT, but I also like any of the Thermalrite 4 heat pipe single tower coolers like the Assassin X Refined SE, or for just a bit more, the Deepcool AG400 in all black or all white with ARGB. For motherboards, with the Ryzen 5600 or 5600X, we want to go with a budget-friendly B550 motherboard like the Gigabyte B550M DS3HAC, which often sells for just $90, or the ASRock B550M Pro 4 with upgraded audio for right around $100. You can also find some full-size ATX motherboards like the ASRock Phantom Gaming 4 or Gigabyte UDAC with Wi-Fi for about the same price. Just avoid the MSI B550 Gen 3 as this is really a B450 motherboard in disguise as it only has PCIe Gen 3. For the i5-12400F, we can use the same boards we did for the previous i3 build, like the ASRock B660M Pro 4 for $95, or the Gigabyte B760M DS3H for $100. We want a 500 gigabyte or larger NVMe SSD drive, like the Patriot P300, Team Group MP33, or the drive we went with, the Western Digital SN580, for right around $40 for 500 gigabytes, or $60 for one terabyte. For the case, in addition to the Deepcool CC360 ARGB and BitPhoenix Nova Mesh Micro ATX cases, which are insane values right now for $58, if you want an ATX size PC case, check out the Antec NX410 in all white or black with two 140 millimeter and one 120 millimeter ARGB fans, or the Montec Air with three non-RGB fans in all white or all black for right around $65 to $70. We're also gonna upgrade the PSU to the MSI MAG A650BN. For right around $750, this is an amazing 1440p gaming PC build. But what if you want 1440p 240Hz gaming in competitive titles or over 90 FPS across all titles? My recommendation is to up the GPU to the Radeon RX 7700 XT 12GB, or if you can find one, the RX 6800 non-XT 16GB GPU for right around $380. These GPUs perform almost the same, with the major difference between that the RX 77 XT has slightly better power usage and brings AV1 encoding with it, which might make a difference for some streamers out there, while the RX 6800 non-XT has 16GB of VRAM, which, while not a must-have at this price point, is very nice. Both of these GPUs run at nearly identical FPS numbers, over 90 average FPS at ultra settings across a wide range of hard-to-run games at 1440p in the TechSpot benchmark, which is getting close to RTX 4070 levels of performance, and it's much faster than the NVIDIA alternative RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte which right now sells for above the $449 MSRP, and it seems to be vanishing. Note that either of these GPUs will need at least a 650-watt PSU when paired with either the Ryzen 5600 or i5-12400. 
This upgrade pushes our build cost to just under $850 total, but gives us an absolutely amazing 1440p gaming destroyer. Let's jump into some great budget 1440p gaming monitors out there. And honestly, these monitors are basically mid range level performance for what we would consider insane budget pricing, even for 1080p monitors just a short while ago. But these prices have become a reality in the 1440p space. Let's start off with my number one budget recommendation, although it's being challenged right now. That's the ASRock Phantom PG27Q15R2A. Yes, it's curved, it's VA, but this is a very good curved VA panel. 165 hertz, it's 27 inches. Comes with a lot of extras too, even like a, an antenna for your Wi-Fi, which is great, which is absolutely great. It does have built-in speakers to it. Overall, just a phenomenal panel. The reason this is so cheap is because ASRock is brand new to gaming monitors and they're basically selling these things on fire sale just to get brand recognition out there. Pick one of these up if you can. But back in the mix is the Acer Nitro XV271U, which is flat IPS. Flat IPS out there, 180 hertz refresh rate. This has been my number one recommendation. Now it's sold out for quite a while over the last couple of months, but it's back basically at an insane price, $179. $179. We often see this more like $199, still a good buy at that price. The one slight drawback about this one only gets to 250 nits of brightness. Now that should be fine for just about anybody unless you're working in a super, super bright environment. Then I would recommend going over the ASRock monitor or jumping up to the next monitor instead. Next monitor, I know it seems so identical. Basically it's the Acer Nitro XV27 to you, the only difference on this is the panel is slightly better on it. $219, you are gonna pay a little bit more money, right? You're gonna pay another $40, but it definitely gets up to 300 nits of brightness, perfect for any environment out there. And similar great motion handling and everything from the previous monitor. So if you want to step up, this is the one I would grab. Other alternatives out there right now are kind of insanely priced, almost around $300. I'd pick these up. Acer's just killing everything. So let's play everyone's favorite game. Should you build one of these now or should you wait? Well, at the time of this video, we're expecting AMD to announce Ryzen 9000 series CPUs and Nvidia to announce the RTX 5090, possibly even the 5080. We also expect some upper mid-range GPU offerings from AMD towards the fall of 2024. Realistically, this probably won't change much for budget builders anytime soon. So my advice would be build when you feel like you're ready. After all, you're likely gonna enjoy this PC for years to come, and you can always upgrade in the future, as either of these platforms will allow you to drop in a faster CPU, like the Ryzen 5700X 3D or 5800X 3D, or the Intel i5-13600K alongside a new GPU upgrade. All these builds are linked down in the video description, so check those out for current pricing and availability in your region. And hey, if you got value out of this video, please give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. And we'll catch you on the next one.